Kelly. So you get you walk away with the film there at the end, in, in my opinion, and I think the Caracas bit is is one that everybody remembers. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a kind of byline, I think, along with Arrivederci Gordon, which I mentioned earlier, the Caracas scene is, is, is kind of key. How did that come about? How did that? All that was supposed, the, the, the very last shot is, is Dorothy. Yeah. Um, and that all that was supposed to be was the pair of us uh, standing at the side of the road holding a sign saying Caracas. And that, that was it. That's all the shot was supposed to be. Um, that somebody said to Bill, uh, <coughs> Bill, then um, somebody spelt Caracas wrong. So he's like, ah, oh, right, Adrian, the designer, hey, you spelt Caracas wrong. She's like, ah, oh shit, I'm sorry, Bill, uh, I'll do another one. And uh, he's like, no, no, hold on a minute. And he came over and he says, right, it's spelt wrong. Um, <coughs> just see what you can come up with. Um, and, and that's what we came up with. That didn't seem to be uh, spectacular at the time, but it certainly. Uh, certainly seemed to go down well, you know. But it was only supposed to be a shot of the two years standing, holding the sign, and that was it. Right. Um, so how recognisable was the film from the one that you kind of witnessed on set to when you actually seen it? Uh, quite, quite different. A lot, right. a lot of stuff was taken out. Like, um, I knew that the, the new town, the town that it was set in was called uh, Climaxton, or Climax Town. Um, but I had never seen any evidence <coughs> because all the stuff that I know that they had done um, at, at the start of the film, where they had you know guys working cutting the grass and you know tending the flowers and all this, and they had a big sign made up in a, on a roundabout, Clamaxton. Um, but I'd never seen anything like that until tonight, and I, I noticed for the first time, like at the very end where yeah. you see um, the sign and Caracas, 9,000 miles or whatever it is, yeah. just above it, it says Climaxton. And I'd never noticed that before until, as I say, till tonight, you know. So look, we, just wee things like that, I mean, I'm sure uh, if you ask Bill, it would be a, a very different right. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the things we were talking about aside, which, and I've seen this film a lot, I have to say, um, the reason why we've had to wait 30 years for the anniversary is because I think there was a restraining order for some time, Rab got a restraining order on me because I was getting so obsessed with this film. And, um, but I think, you know, there's the bit where Gregory leaves the house and all the, the kids are kind of round about. And I've seen it a thousand times until the screening in Glasgow, but there's a kid halfway up a tree that I'd never seen before. And it's full of great little I just watched that tonight. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> These great rewatchable re scenes. So did you know you had something special when you were making it? Definitely. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we, we, we didn't know what it was, but uh, we, we knew that there was something special going on, you know, apart from having, having a good laugh and meeting some great people. Um, we knew that there was something really special going on. We didn't know what it was, um, more so than, than it was in, uh, in, in that sinking feeling. That sinking feeling was more as we were a wee bit younger, we were having a, a real laugh at that, you know. Gregory's Girl was, ha was more serious in respect of there was a bigger budget and um, there was more commitment there. Um, but no, th there was something really special going on and everybody, I think, was aware of it. Because I watch it now and kind of, um, just because I talk about films for a living, it kind of strikes me as that it, it's about that new decade and, you know, even the line in it that you just had about modern girls, modern boys, it seems, you know, it's Mrs. Thatcher going on in this film and, and that whole new town and optimism and, and this is the start of something new and we all know how that ended up. So it, it's, it's kind of in, interesting the way I think that, that this film goes along. Um, why do you think we're still watching it? Because we showed you this last time you were here and I just think it's a great photo. Um, mm. Why are we still watching it 30 years on? I haven't got a clue, actually. Uh, just simply because um, the characters are, are all recognisable. Um, I'm sure everybody knew a Gordon Sinclair or whatever. These these characters, um, teachers were a lot more relaxed as well. Yeah. Um, I just think uh, it's it, it's all the role reversal uh, <coughs> made plain. I think to people, yeah. you know, because people are like that. You know what? It, it, the teenage years, 
kids are acting like adults, you know, and the adults act like kids, and boys are acting like girls, girls are acting like boys. And I, I think that's a big part of the appeal as well, you know. Um, and I, 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 I had a quote somewhere uh, I got from, um, I got at the net the other night, and I, 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 I left it, but it was talking about the fact that there's, there's so much, uh, so much comedy in Gregory's Girl, but a lot of uh, wisdom as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, if, if, if uh, teenagers realised it, you know, they could sit and watch that and learn a hell of a lot about life, about what's going to happen to them. Um, and at the end of the quote it said, you know, um, maybe we should just make Gregory's Girl for adults to watch, you know, just so that they don't realise what's going to happen and they make their own mistakes and things like that. But yeah. I think that's a big bit of the appeal as well, but the characters as well, if they knew yeah. these people. Yeah, because I think, for me, it has... I mean, there's not a bad performance in there as well. I think mm. everybody is just perfect in it. But I think that there's great relationships as well. If you look at Gregory and his sister, that's, that's an incredibly touching that's, relationship that's in my favourite. Um, my favourite line is at the end, who's going to be Gregory's girl in Europe? Um, I think that that's... Uh, the wee girl that played my Maddie was brilliant. Unfortunately, um, they dubbed her voice. Right. And right. I, for the life of me, I don't know why. All I can imagine is that it, she was really broad, yeah. or maybe you know uh, a bit too quiet or whatever. But that, for me, yeah. is the best part of the film. And for me, that is Gregory's girl. Yeah. His wee sister. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I like about it now, as, as well, which is, is is common in all comedies, is that substituting things. Mm. So in there they do it with food. If you remember the scene where he comes in and goes, you know, food, 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 that's all you ever think about. And that, that's all the time in modern comedies, and yet 30 years ago. Yeah. And it seems, I think for me, that's why it's not dated, because it, it, it's keying into all those kind of anxieties, whether, whether you're 12 or, or mm. 32 or 42, or whatever, you still have them. But also it's just beautifully performed, and, uh, and it never feels acted, which yeah. I think, it, it's interesting that you mentioned the, the gritty um, Scottish films earlier. Because there's not many British films from this period, from this period, except for that sinking feeling, that felt like this. Yeah. So what? So what changed in the Scottish film industry? Because for me, the Scottish film industry is Gregory's Girl and that sinking feeling. So what? What effect did those two films have? The, 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 the effect it, was, it gave it gave the Scottish film industry at that point a really good kick up the jacksie, eh, which is what it needed. Oh. Um, there was next to nothing happening before that um, and, and after uh, Gregory's Girl there was, there was a spate of uh, lo lots, lots of these wee movies coming al up, uh, along like uh, Living Apart Together, um, Restless Natives, yeah. um, Heavenly Pursuits, is yes. that the one with Tom Conte and yeah. Helen Mirren? There was lots of these cracking wee films which incidentally were, was, were made by Bill Forsyth's ex-partner. Right because uh, he used to have a documentary filmmaking yes, company. Right. Uh, but I, it was, I, I think it was getting away from the, the, the grittiness, the violence. I mean, I'm, I'm from the Gorbals in Glasgow, you know? Um, so any, like, the Jimmy Boyle thing, yeah. Yeah. that's what that was all about, you know? Um, just a boys game, you know? Yeah. Again, yeah. It, was, it was all about the violent side of Glasgow, yeah. you know? And I think it was... It was it was an opportunity to get away from that. Yeah. Um, about a year ago, I was asked to uh, to award Bill Forsyth with a BAFTA Scotland for services to the industry, which was a, an amazing honour. It was fantastic. It was a great thing to do. Um, and I met lots of lots of old pals um, that I hadn't seen for a long time, and I met a, a few new folk. Like I met. Um, Armando Iannucci, ah, yeah. who wrote yeah, in, the loop, uh, in the Loop, in the thick of it. Um, now, I, I, I missed what he actually said, because I gave Bill the award just before he got up to, uh, to accept an award. Um, but apparently what he said was, it's great to see Bill Forsyth uh, and Rab uh, on the stage together again. He said, I always wanted to make films, um, comedies in Glasgow, but I never knew you could until I went to see that sinking feeling and, and then I realised, oh, you can do it, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so it was just, uh, it was a freshness, yeah. you know, it was, yeah. it was just a total turn of direction, it was 180 degrees, right yeah. back the other day. Yeah. 
Excellent. Thank you, Rab. Has anyone got any questions? Is there anything that you, other than where Rab got his T-shirt from? And it was from me. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got any questions? Do you, do you still keep in touch with any of the cast? Yeah, um, that was uh, in February. Um, and I hadn't seen well, Sani in the end. Uh, he was my best mate for the year, so we were still in touch. Um, Gordon I hadn't seen for about uh, 10 years. Dee Hepburn I had seen a couple of years ago. Um, I mean, these were, apart from uh, Claire and Dee, we were all members of the youth theatre. Um, we, we, we keep in touch more since then. Um, I've been in touch with, with Caroline and Gordon quite a lot, uh, and Tony in the far end. So yeah, we, we do, keep, uh, do keep in touch uh, more nowadays, you know. Um, but there was, there was quite a few folk that weren't there. Uh, I, and and I, I've, I've been back in touch with those folk as well, you know, so it's just... Uh, just like old times sometimes. We went out for a drink after that, which was a great night, and we went, I don't remember what, what pub it was we went to, but just a wee bar. Um, we went to one pub, and the guy wasn't going to let us in. And we were like, sorry. I know, nah, don't like your shoes. <laughs> I, and I think Caroline, she got very abusive about the guy, but we cut across the road, <laughs> went into another pub, and we are having a drink. Um, there was a DJ on and he stopped the music and he'd say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present the cast of Gregory's Girl and we all sort of went on. I don't know uh, how they got that one, but uh, no, we do keep in touch and we're all still pals. Do you know what the story was with, with Gregory's Two Girls, the one that came out in the late 90s? I, I, right. I haven't seen it. Um, but cheeky there was no parts written you said? No, um, no, that was a bit, bit disappointing. I think it was basically, uh, I might be wrong here, but I think it was basically a vehicle for Bill and Gordon uh, Sinclair to work together again. Um, I mean, they did a bit of filming up in Stirling Castle and I'd lived at the bottom of the hill and they never even gave me a there's, phone. There's some funny bits in it, really. I haven't seen it. Um, I've I've heard a lot of folks saying it wasn't you know wasn't very good and um, you all you guys should have been on it again. Like, yeah. this, this is absolutely true. I bought it on VHS and took it back, um, and I've never done that. I thought it was I thought it was mm. dreadful. I, 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 it didn't have any of the the charm and kind of naivety of the first one and the, the, yeah. the naturalness. I think for me anyway. Though I agree there were some very good lines in it, um, the but they just didn't. The that was just right. Like, yeah. Be for Bieber or Bieber for Badger. That's just they just didn't come out as. Right. There was no quotable ones, you know. You, you know, right, like yeah. in this one, but where it just rolls. A any other questions that anybody wants to know? Okay. Okay. It just leaves me once again, Rob. It, it's been an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. I really do appreciate yeah. you coming down, Rob. You can. <laughs> Thank you. Next week, um, Donkeys. Um, the director will be here, but I'll still be banging on about Gregory's girl, so somebody might have to give me a shake. Um, thank you for she coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She fun, yeah? Yeah, I don't know. Right, because uh, anyway. Um, pick up a leaflet if you haven't got one on the way out. If you want to come down and have a chat, you're more than welcome. But thank you for coming. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Because I did read that she's influenced by that whole. Because oh, yeah. there's, there's actually a, there's a scene in Donkeys where um, they're sitting on, on on a bench and it's straight out of that sinking thing. Wow, in the in the park. Yeah. yeah. When, when have you seen it? Yeah. Where the, where they. I haven't even heard about it. Right. The, the